And we are not live. You know, just once I want to say that. Okay. It's, it's kind of growing on me. Yeah. Okay, let me say. <laughs> all right, all right. And, and three, two, one. And we are not live. Hell yeah. <laughs> It's not just the two of us, okay, it's, today. Yeah. E- even though this shot, right, only two of us, right, but there's someone else, you know, in front of us. A real person. A, re- a real person. You wave, wave your hand, wave your hand. Hey, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ghostly hand. <laughs> oh, ghostly no. hand. <laughs> um, we have a returning guest uh, for this episode. Can I, I don't know what you all can guess just based on the voice. Try. Say some scary, something, some, something that sounds scary. You are about to... Die in Carl's home. Ooh. <laughs> can, can you do your your usual sign in for your podcast? Oh wait. Um, hi, M blank, and welcome to a blank blank blank. <laughs> <laughs> you all have probably guessed by now. Yes. Teddy's back with us. Yeah. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Carl. Hi, Wayne. Um, for those of y'all who didn't. Tune in to that first episode where Teddy was a guest on Dead Air or have not listened to her podcast. Uh, first of all, what's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> second of all, uh, let's do little introductions for Teddy. If if the intro has changed a bit, let me know, okay? Okay, let's go. Don't like halfway through start yelling, wrong, wrong. <laughs> wrong. Teddy is the creator and host of the true crime podcast, A Brief Case. Every Tuesday, A Brief Case takes a closer look into the deadly and distressing murder madness and minds of true crime in this little part of the world. I forgot how much murder and madness there was in your intro. We'll set up the scene and walk through the nitty gritty, bringing you the facts, details and theories surrounding each case. Teddy, how are you today? I am tired. Oh dear. But I am invigorated by being on set. Is it the coffee? It is the coffee. Come nice. makes great coffee. Try to figure that as much. Yeah. I, I'm just drinking water in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> I, I don't know what's in Carl's uh-huh. cup. Water, water, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already had my coffee. I'm not saying that Carl didn't make me coffee, but you know, mm. I, I'm just having water. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So the last time that we, we actually uh worked with Teddy was for an episode of her podcast. I think it was yeah. Halloween. Halloween, right? right? Halloween. And I won. I won. You I won. Win. Okay. First of all, can we set some context? <laughs> We what what was the game again? Okay, so there were two games. Yes. The first was the Halloween scary story scare off mm. that you won my votes. Mm. And the second one, no, but I did send both of y'all um for the for, uh, Toto. Toto, Toto, yes. Toto. But y'all didn't win. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And then the second one was um the choose your own adventure. Oh yes. yeah. Yes, <clears throat> where uh, Wayne mentioned that he would sleep with, with the, the werewolf <laughs> to, <laughs> to survive. I, okay, again, I feel like a lot of this is taken out of context. Um, I said I would sleep with the werewolf, I believe, when they were in human form. Yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, that part never gets mentioned. <laughs> It's <laughs> always Wayne will sleep with a werewolf. <laughs> Wayne will touch the werewolf and cuddle the werewolf. If I recall, yeah. that was the, the description of the episode as well. <laughs> Wayne will sleep with a werewolf. Find out more in the Halloween episode of A Briefcase. It did really well, yeah. I think. Thanks. No, I, I mean Great. like... Uh, <laughs> I feel so touched by that. I think the, conclu- the conclusion was that uh, I will survive, right? I, I survived or something. I'm right? quite sure you would have survived. It was a bass feet thing, right? Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. a bass feet thing. thing. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask the, the ghost story one? Yes. How many how many votes did I lose by? <laughs> I think it wasn't a lot. I think it was like five votes or something. Yeah. Out of how many? <laughs> Don't say five. <laughs> 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 no, no. It was like 30, 30 something votes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I don't feel too bad about that. Yeah. I, w- I was honestly expecting it to be much worse. Yeah. <gasps> I honestly was expecting people to go like one person voted for no, me. No, the girls on the wall story was really scary. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I, I, I genuinely thought like the one vote would have come for Kyle and that would have been like a sympathy kind of vote. Like, <laughs> I vote for him, I vote for him. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't feel too bad. Yeah. Lose so, five. So like, uh, like if you want to check out the two episodes, the first date and episode featuring Teddy and our appearance on Teddy's podcast, Links are down below. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Um, all right, so we, we have you back because we wanted to talk about a few things. Okay. True um, crime. True crime, true <laughs> crime. A few things to do with true crime and of course the supernatural. Yes. Uh, so we wanted to start with something that's a bit of a combination of both. 
got to read this to make sure I get it all correct. Um, this one very recent only. Like, yeah, this is very recent. Literally like last week. So there was a case like last week, like mm. you're saying, about how a landlord who was accused of molesting his female tenant on two occasions was acquitted of one charge as the woman was unsure if it was him or a spirit who touched her. <laughs> the landlord, however, was convicted of the second charge of molestation and sentenced to eight months jail. Have you heard about this case? Yes. I, I, I sent it to her. Yes, right? you okay. sent it to me. I read, I read through it. What were your thoughts when you read through this? So, so like quick summary of the case. Yes. The girl was a tenant with her boyfriend and they hung out with the landlord, which is like not unusual if you're on good terms. Yeah. And then she goes to her room and I think the, her boyfriend went to shower or something. And then like the first time she wakes up, she, she thinks that the landlord is molesting her, but she's not sure because the landlord, if I'm not wrong, has a room full of Thai... Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Thai gods that he he worships or like, I don't know, maybe it's like a toyol. They, they never really go into much detail on that. Yeah, And then so she's like, oh my God, is it him? Is it uh, <laughs> is it him or is it the, the thing? So I think the girl is also quite superstitious. Mm. And then, you know, like moving is such a nightmare that she's like, uh, maybe it's him, maybe it's the ghost. Ah, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> and then so the second time she really was like, oh my God, it's him. And then the thing is like, why would you tell the judge that? I think the girl was too honest. Yeah. yeah. I it, Also, I feel like, like you said, Channel News Asia, uh, where we read the article from, yeah, they let they dropped the ball. They didn't talk about what kind of spirit it was. They didn't talk about where the spirit comes from and everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, as as horror creators, we're a bit disappointed. Channel News Asia, yeah, you really let us down. This this small demographic of your audience. Yeah, but what's interesting is that they actually, you know, mention and yeah. and and I, I I read the 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 article. The, the the judge actually also referenced to the spirit side. So the mm. spirit were the first time when you were touched by the spirit. Uh, were you sure that it was a spirit or was it the guy? Then she was like, I'm not sure. Mm. So so it's, it's always interesting to see people of the law <laughs> recognizing the supernatural. <laughs> do you, do but you, to do it with a straight face in front of a room yeah. full of people is like, bro. I mean, you know, it, from us, we're like, wow, well done. You actually mentioned it. But from like, okay, from, from the true crime standpoint, do you yeah. think that that was a bad idea or... To like mention the spirits. Yeah. Like, honestly, recently I've been like looking into a lot of true crime to do with like women and sexual mm. assault. Like not intentionally, it just pops up. Yeah. Uh, which is like kind of like, oh, why is it popping up so much? And then the thing is that for some reason, not necessarily the courts in Singapore, but like the courts in general will find the opposition, the guy, the guy, whatever, the courts will always find reasons to discredit a woman. Mm, mm. And so, I mean, not always, but like many of the time you, you see them coming for her character, her morality, for things that are not related to the case. Like, oh, she likes to party, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And so I'm not saying lie, but I'm saying, why would you bring up ghost to court? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not exactly the most relevant point. La. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have just been like, I suspected that it was him, but I wasn't sure. Mm. You, you didn't have to be like, I thought it was maybe the ghost. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a very fair point. But but I, I, I feel like my personal take on this mm. case is that the landlord is super scheming. Like mm. it's like Tim Foyne kind of thing. The landlord basically put the idea of the spirit into her mind. Really? And like, you know, like yeah. he, maybe like he really like is spiritual and stuff, like, but he's like, oh, my house got ghosts on because I am, I, I'm raising like the, the Kubantongs, like the, mm. the, the, the spirits. Uh, and uh, if they touch you, uh, uh, don't worry, it's, it's just them being cheeky. So he, yeah. he probably put the idea in her yeah. head. Yeah. Then after that, then he went to molest her. And then she linked it up. I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying that that happened, but that's yeah. my theory. La, like yeah. like, like uh, how he would have committed it uh, and hope that, you know, she maybe she think that it's the spirit. La. That's them scheming. Also, also, girl, why you move into the house with the ghost and the landlord who is raising the ghost? Maybe I mean, cheap. like you said, you know, moving is moving a pain. is hard, and you know, rental, rent, right? Rent is rental expensive. Is, is expensive. You know, you got you got to do what you got to do. You know, every everybody's had housemates who have a bit of quirks. So you know, I guess mm. potentially raising Kumantong not the, the worst. Not the worst. It could have been worse. Yeah. Like you know, maybe he was raising some other spirits or what. Spirit, spirits aside, lah. But I feel mm. like it is also a big question. Uh, I mean, as to the defense that asked 
Like, then why you continue staying? Like, mm. I guess like from that, that question itself, like I want to throw this question out to everyone. Like, if right, your house, uh, I mean the, 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 if your rental unit is, <laughs> is haunted <laughs> by your uh, landlord's ghost, would you still stay there? Depends on what the ghost is doing. Mm. It's a ghost, it's doing ghost stuff. Lah. Okay, so it's the rent to haunting ratio. Oh my god! <laughs> Small haunting, but low rent, okay. Big haunting, medium rent, not okay. Um, big haunting, low rent, okay. So here is, here is my, my thing. If I can get like, say a three bedroom condo for 2K, Ridiculous, right? Mm. But every now and then, my cup gets swiped off. The TV turns on by itself. Um, when I sleep, there's woo. I think still okay. <laughs> hang, on, hang on. 2K, what kind of amenities are we talking about here? What's the location? Uh, I'm talking about central. I'm talking about- the Wow. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would put up with a lot yeah. for 2K central uh, pool and gym. 2K central pool and gym. I can even have. I can even put up cup being tossed aside. TV turn on. The ghost face in the push- mirror. Can face in the mirror might. Okay. Oh hell no! Oh. I would do face in the mirror for two K central three bedroom full amenities. How terrifying is the face? Okay lah, it's just a girl. I'm a girl. She's a girl. Let's be roomies. It, no, no, not like a bloody face. No, no, no. Just like just like a girl being sad. Just being like. Oh. How often does the face appear in the mirror? Ah, uh, every week or so. Maybe we have a schedule. You can come and haunt me on Thursdays. <laughs> Jeez. For 2K, actually, that, that's all quite it's reasonable. It's reasonable, right? That is actually quite reasonable. What's, what's yours? What's yours? <sighs> I'm, I'm trying to think of the, my upper limit where I go, no, no, I cannot get that. Because okay. I'm even thinking to myself, like, you know, slight physical, like, touch. Like, like, bois. like, like the ghost pushes me. Oh my mm. God, you know what? Let's not even talk about rentals. I would buy. Mm. If I could get under one mil three bit, <laughs> like like ridiculous prices, but like soft haunting, I'm gonna do it. And chances are, if I'm nice to the ghost, maybe the ghost will assist in my career. Nice. And podcast progression. Nice. Get free special guests every episode. 50 50 uh, on that one. Because, like, you know, there, there's there's the whole agreement in terms of, of you know, your rent and everything, mm. or in terms of the price and everything. Whether they help out, again, you know, Sometimes you have messy mm-hmm. roommates, mm-hmm. but it's it's <laughs> it's worth it's worth the rent to tolerate them. Hmm. I I really am trying to think, like you know, what's my up? I suppose grievous bodily harm. Yeah. <laughs> like if blood is drawn at any point, then suddenly the 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 ratio shifts a little bit. Blood dripping. So from yes the or walls. no, win. Yes hmm? or no, two k. Yeah. Well, for two k, okay. For two k, if not, okay, blood dripping from the walls. If it disappears, mm, I'm mm, fine mm. with that. Because okay. then I don't have to clean it up. Okay. Um, the ghost makes me bleed. <laughs> then 2K, not worth it anymore. Okay, that's the line. Yeah, mm. that's my line. Yeah. The, so no bodily harm. La. No, okay, no grievous bodily harm. Mm. If the ghost Jeez. if the ghost pushes me yeah. and I don't fall and break anything, then I can I can personally chalk it up to, oh, I'm clumsy. Because mm. that is true. So if the ghost pushes me, face, I don't know. I if, if 2K. That uh, that huh. feels like it might be a line for me. Would because your I, wife do it though? I feel like <laughs> <laughs> Would she be like, babe, but the rent is so good? No, okay, the face thing might that I, I'm quite sure. <laughs> the, she she will watch this episode and I'm sure she will correct me. But I'm quite sure the face thing is a no-go for her. <laughs> that's that's no pun intended, it's a little bit too in your face. Yeah. I feel like the like you said, soft haunting. So there's mm. soft haunting. <laughs> stuff soft happens, haunting. but there's no guest appearance in our lives. Yeah. If if we can if anything that happens in the house can be chalked up to wind or clumsiness or 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 some other mm. phenomenon, I think that's our line. Once we see face, that might be a problem. There you have it. <laughs> like basically both of them said yes to what a, 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 cent, a central u, central unit in yes. a, a place in central area 
$2,000 with three bedroom. All you real estate agents out there. Yeah, I was just about to say. Or, yeah. under, will, or under one mil. Or budget. under one million for budget. Yes. So, so okay, all you real estate agents that specialize in homes with history, uh, uh, homes you with can history. Reach, reach out to us in the comments or in the email. I will link you up with both Teddy and Wayne to buy the house. That has got to be an HGTV show. Yeah. <laughs> You homes, can homes consider with, go no. pitch go pitch homes with history. Yeah, maybe maybe no, but like there was this guy. Um, <clears throat> it's Japan lah. So there was this guy who 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 likes to he like I he's, he's I a comedian. Like he likes yeah. to uh, talk about ghosts with history, oh, and, uh, okay. houses with history. So he yeah. go go in there and then, oh somebody died here. Then he was like making fun of it and yeah. stuff. Like like he did a whole comedy routine lah. So yeah, I think people are like. The point is like, you know, like now, right, the, the renter has got to the point people are like considering, yeah, maybe I will I will stay in like a house where there's like a death or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Would you stay in a house if there was a death? Um, a murder? Oh, because I was going to be like, but my grandma died in my parents' yeah. place. Not a benevolent it, No, but my grandma is not benevolent. She was an angry Hokkien ama. Okay, um, okay. It's slightly- sometimes, sometimes when I sneak out of the house last time in my youth, I swear, like I felt like her, her herself was standing because cause her bedroom was next to the kitchen. I was facing the kitchen. I swear she was looking at me like, Lede, trust me. <laughs> when, when she was alive? When she, I'm both. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Let me rephrase my definition of benevolent. Okay, murder, murder. Yes, yes, yes. Murder. murder. Yeah. A murder. Would you say in a flat of murder? Um, like the who, who previous. Who was murdered? In what context? Give me a context. Uh, I think murder of passion. Uh, husband kill wife or wife kill husband? Hus- either lah, either. Oh, see, that's the thing. I'm oh, like, okay, okay. I think like. Husband I, kill wife. Husband kill wife. So the wife is a dead one. Yeah. I'm okay. I think she and I would have a lot to talk about. <laughs> See, but that's the thing. I would say I'm not okay. Yeah. Because I I would probably be the primary target. Because you're the man. Yeah. Correct. But if it was like wife kill husband, I would not be okay. Because like- Why? A, a, a man who deserves to be killed. <laughs> oh, honestly, oh, wow. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're 100% correct. Because if wife kill husband, I also will not be okay. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's like trait. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Just so you know, I, I will not stay in these kind of houses. Wayne would go in and meet the ghost and be like, oh, woman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if she, if, if she sees me and she goes like, eh, he's, he's all right. He, what's he going to do? Honestly. Yeah. Look at that upper body strength. Eh, eh. No, no, no. No comparison to the to the, the monster that murdered me. So so you, so both of you will stay in places with history. I, or the, okay. Just going by the theory that you know, the, the the female ghost will not look at me and go, ah, he's harmless. Mm. I will say no. Mm. If if I can have like an interview mm. with yes. the ghost. Yes. Makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. Mm. Uh, male ghost, immediately, it's a no for me. Mm. Because like you said, Chanza, he kind of deserved it. Like, yeah. I would, it would also depend on the house because I have such a weak spot for historical houses. I think black mm. and whites are so beautiful. Mm. So chances are there is no black and white that is not untouched by death in yeah. Singapore given how old they are and given that the rental fees are probably like terrible. Mm. But if I could get one for like really cheap, you know, like you bid for them, bid for the rentals, I would. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, like speaking of which, right? Like I I, I do have like, a, this was pre-married cow. So this was like maybe 2019, 2018. So I was at the peak of no fear. Like, not scared of nothing. On. <clears throat> now I scared a lot of things. <laughs> so I, I I really wanted to move out. Then mm. uh, I saw a whole bunch of black and white houses for bidding. Uh, it's near the One North area. Mm. But you can tell la, haunted AF. Like haunted <laughs> is like, it, you, you to go there, you walk there from the MRT, 15 minutes up the hill. Oh my God. So it's a whole bunch of refurbished black and white houses. And it was really cheap. Like a uh, uh, ground floor, I think it was like 2K. That's amazing. Two ground, That's amazing. ground floor unit with three rooms. But you look at the unit from the outside, you're like, this looks haunted. This looks like a set that they used to film like some British drama. So so I I, I, I wanted to do it. Lah, but you know, uh, circumstances didn't allow me to do it. Basically, uh, TLDR, the guy was late and I was pissed off. And then I just left. I, I didn't. <laughs> I was I was angry at the fact that the, the agent was late and made me wait for one hour and then I left. I still waited for one hour, by the way. I felt like an idiot. I was like, like oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. It's like half an hour later, I call him. He's like, I'm coming, I'm coming. I still wait for it. I did one hour, right? then I left. 
Then 15 minutes later, he said, I reached already. Where are you? I said, I left already. I'm not going to do it. I like how you said circumstances. And considering the fact that we're recording an episode of Dead Air, I assume you meant ghosts. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was prepared already. I was like, leave, we go, leave, we go. Sir. Like the, <laughs> the, because the one north, right? You see, it's, it's mm. different guys. Like colonial houses, they usually used to, to house colonists, people who colonize your country. White bros. Yeah. So I, I can guilt trip them. I say, hey, last time <laughs> I, you know, my, my ancestors, they coolie, you know, uh, something like that. Lah. Like then now, now I need to reap the rewards. Let me, let me stay in this house in peace or something. Like, as to compare to like a, a, a fellow Singaporean who got murdered like and become vengeful spirit, that one like a bit hard to negotiate. La. I feel la, that personally, I would much rather deal with a, a spirit of a British soldier as to a spirit of someone who is recently deceased. They want a bit hard to, to talk. You can actually make fun of them also. Haha, <laughs> you come all the way here but cannot take spice. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you would chase the ghost away? Just like throw pepper at them? No, I won't throw. I will just keep making fun of him. Ah. You would have so much content. I know, right? Yes. That's like a TV show right there. Like, you know, if imagine like this guy who moves into this black and white house and then meets like a British soldier ghost <laughs> and then they become friends. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like if there isn't already a show like that, there should be. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I went to see um, one black and white before that was listed on, you mm. know, the government bidding site yeah, yeah. Um, when I was looking for like my own place. Yeah. And it was cheap. It was like 1.6, one bedroom, kitchen, garden, haunted as <laughs> And like- How uh, you know? Yeah. Bad vibes, uh. mm. I mean, like, I don't, I can't see or I can't feel, but like, you know, like the moment you walk you, in. You like, went, oh, so the, you went, actually you met the agent and then you went in. La. I just went to see from outside. Oh, yeah. Okay, no. Where, because which, where? A Pasir Ris, Pasir Ris some more. Yeah. Pasir Ris go black and white, man? Not, uh, not exactly a black and white, but it was like old. You could tell it was very old. Near and the it was beach, pinkies. is it? Yeah, near the beach. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it was a one bedroom. So I think it was probably like the maid's house last time. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It used to be the the I think like chalet or some something. Mm. Yeah. Fairy Point Chalet is haunted as hell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. stories of that. I'm quite sure more chalets in Singapore, there has to be like something to them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We I mean, I mean the older ones definitely, but like I think more chalets. Fairy Point is quite rubber on. Yeah. yeah. You know, this weekend, um, I met a couple expats mm-hmm. who lived in I think if I'm not wrong, like colonial houses that look at Changi Hospital, like from their backyard, you oh. go up, then you look up, then you see Changi Hospital. Uh, I think it's Cranwell. Uh. Yeah, it's and called Cranwell. We actually, I, I asked, do you know the history? Did, did they know the history of the place? Uh-huh. And they were like, yeah. Then I was like, so I guess they don't care. Then they said, I, I think the people said no. And then apparently their dog would sometimes like just stare at mm. it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember that I said this before on the show, but I had like an ex-colleague mm-hmm. who moved from uh, the UK and he actually asked me once, do you want to go visit Old Changi Hospital? <laughs> Was this pre or post the fence? Um, pre. Wait, when did the fence go up? Uh, late. Uh, late. No, no, late 2000s. Yeah, late 2000s. Late 2000s. Oh, then it might. <clears throat> yeah, I, it was pre. Mm. It was definitely pre, pre-defense. pre Yeah. Um. And he wanted to go after having his kids some more. Nice. <laughs> nice. I naturally, of course, told him no. And I think he just got lazy because like, you know, if nobody was going to follow him, he wouldn't go. I'm like, mm. yeah, I, I, I guess to be fair, it's probably the same reason why like, you know, if we see like a Western ghost, we're like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah like, I think it's like cultural, you know, it's like, yeah. bro, you, you think you're scary. Uh? Yeah. You, 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 you're wearing like colonies. You think it's scary. Yeah, I think the, the caca on the tree is scarier, bro. Yeah. That one will rip out your genitals. <laughs> that that yeah. is scary. Hmm. What are you going to do? Colonize me? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you lay claim to my land. Oh. Oh. Text I mean, me. Technically, isn't that what they're doing if they're haunting your house? Not really. Uh. They're, they're tr- just stuck there. Uh. They're trying to get you to move out. They're, they're just stuck there. Uh. I think I will, if I really stay and then there, there really is a, uh, like a, you know, British soldier spirit, I will start bugging the spirit. Hey, tell me stories then. Hey, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell, tell, tell. How did you lose? How did you lose to the <laughs> Japanese soldiers? Tell me what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you would mind them for content. Uh. Yeah, mind them for, I, I'll ask them to sit down on an empty chair and shoot documentary. Oh my God. <laughs> No, then you must do like, um, 
you got read like do you read like urban legends on the internet yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so you must do the one where you put like the empty chair and yeah. then you like have like mirrors facing each other oh, damn. Yeah, so that you can see them in the mirrors oh. yeah so you have like two mirrors and then it's like the endless tunnel and then apparently you'll see them like walking through the mirrors and then eventually they'll sit on the chair nice oh. and then you can start asking them questions Teddy you should do that for your new black and white no <laughs> Uh, yeah, so mm. to, uh, what what was it the the condo central location in for the condo? I think still can also lah. Still can uh. I mean, there are some. To be fair, central location there are some quite dodgy areas. There are like um when I was first moving out. So this was the one when I was looking for housemates. Mm. I went to look at a couple of units in IP because it was mm. central, central, central. Uh, IP, huh? Yeah, International Plaza at oh. Anson Road, mm. oh. and. The condos are really very big, like, and they have basically junior masters, so mm. basically bedrooms with en suites. Yeah. yeah. And so the one that I went to look at was with there were three bedrooms. Each of them had their own en suite, and one of them was and and they were gonna be boys. So mm. I was like okay with that because the guys seemed like really chill and mm. TBH they were kind of small. So I was like, Haha, I can take you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I wouldn't have moved. I wouldn't have even considered if like I went in and the guys were like big and like dudes, but they were like they were like nice gentle boys. And I was like, ah, this is delightful. An accountant, <laughs> you know, like corporate <laughs> finance bros. People you can easily take in a fight, lah. Exactly. Yeah. But then I go and see the room of the guy that was um that was going to like let out let, give up his room mm. and it, it looks fine it looks fine and then I go into the bathroom and everything is black yeah like it was it was a very interesting choice like pure the, black or yeah like, like the toilet bowl was black oh. and it was like a bit dodgy and after that I go into the kitchen and everything is red and I was like this landlord has like some sort of theme going on yeah and then like like I didn't feel bad but like I felt weird. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an interesting color combo. Yeah. 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 Colors colors play a part, right? In Feng Shui. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, rem- um, I remember going to this. I mean, I I when I was studying in the cell, I had, I had a few international classmates. So I remember to this uh, Indonesian guy's uh, rental. Uh, it's a uh, obviously a condo. So it's a, a very old condo, and it's a very famous condo. When you're driving up here, you will see it's red color. It's mm. full red. So apparently that condo is super haunted. I don't know the name. I will say that I I, I don't care. I will just say the name is if it I P know. Center, it's, it's not P Center. It's not P Center. You you PIA don't pass there. Uh. But uh that red building is famously haunted. And yeah, then then the first time when I went there, I already got the vibes. Then I I, I asked my uh, schoolmate and he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the landlord say haunted or not. <laughs> uh, then the roommates also say haunted. It's a super huge room like I think a huge flat like, like yeah. there were like at least four or five uh, four to five tenants mm. yeah and then he had his own room la, and his room was behind the kitchen so mm. like you just feel like the the the, the unit is like just off la. then uh, they say that swimming is not allowed in the swimming pool because apparently people drunk there yeah. does the swimming pool have water? yes have, have. but you're just not allowed? yeah apparently because I asked him hey bro you never go and swim I said yeah. cannot swim yeah, see, because the security guards get people drunk. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of urban legend for that 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 condo la, But there's a reason why it's red color. Like they, they painted it red for feng shui reason la, The whole thing. Hang on. So they will put water into the pool, but nobody is allowed to swim. Yeah la. You should cover for it the in ghosts, your, You for, should cover it in houses uh, with histories. Yeah. <laughs> for for the, the no HGTV. like like people will start sending me yeah. C's and DCs, bro. They will be like, how you shut up, I don't talk about don't talk about this. Don't talk about this property. Don't talk about that property. People will hate me. Property agents will not be my friends. Yeah. Wow. Apparently they'll be our friends, lah, because mm-hmm. we've got a like a tolerance level when it comes to haunted homes. Lah, so. uh, this <laughs> weekend I was at um, Coastal Settlement, which is how we ran Ooh. into the people who yeah. ah. Yes. And then um, so our friends that we were having dinner with gave us a ride and then halfway through we were talking about Changi Hospital. Ah. Nice. Mm. And then so the the dude who is like amazing and has all these stories, he was like, let's go see. And then we drive up nice. in his little car at night, mm. at, night nice. at like 10 plus already. Nice. And then we went to look at it. And then we drove down. And then when we were out on the main road, he was like, the only reason I dared to do this was because my car read. Oh. Ah. Uh, is that- Doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> no, isn't, is that enough? I don't think really? it helps. Because his car is like red. 
I yeah. know, but like it doesn't help. No, unless yeah. it's car got protection. Eh, like. hey, but you know what's really scary? I noticed that when we were driving up, that you know, in the road leading up, there is a certain point where the workers stop trimming the bushes and cutting the grass. Yeah. There's yeah. like a very clear demarcation. Yes. And on top of that, some windows are open. Why are the windows open? Isn't this an abandoned property? Like they are like open. And it, these aren't like normal windows to open. These are windows with like, that you must pull open. The open. Mm. Huh? Oh my god! I mean, you the know. ghost is like oh, a bit hot, uh, open, uh, today. Uh. Oh, one of the other ghosts farted. Yeah, maybe. maybe you know, you can't it's like in there. But but I mean, uh, there there was a few times where we went up for another mm. project, uh, for Changi mm. Hospital. Then then uh, security guards came. Oh, they yeah. came. They came. They didn't come for us. They came to clock. So mm. they will go inside the abandoned unit. They will clock only. They didn't go in Oh Changi. They yeah. went into the building beside Oh Changi. So mm. when you go up, right. There's yeah. another building with a gate, right? They went yeah. in that building, they, they, then they clock, then they come out. Then they asked, what are you doing here? I said, no lah, just uh, walk, walk. Yeah. Then he, he knew lah, he knew. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask him, but I was like, no lah, I shouldn't ask about ghost stories when I'm outside of Old Changi Hospital. <laughs> and those guys have to work on there. Yeah, those guys time. have to work. Mm-hmm. But normally when you're in this field, you're used to it lah. Yeah, but I mean, I hope your friend never gonna because did you guys exit the vehicle? Uh, no, no, no. We just oh, stayed inside. Okay. We okay just okay drove la. up there. And then so, you know, that's the point where yeah. you get the, the main hospital and then there's that building that you're talking about. And then about. there's the radar. Yeah, thing, yeah. Right? And yeah. then we did the three-point turn there. Oh, that's it. La. <laughs> okay, la, okay. La, okay no, la. but I, we, we, we like stopped there and we looked at it for a while. Then it's like, okay, let's go. Amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did have um, an ex-colleague tell me this. Surprisingly, this is a story that I haven't told on the air yet. Um, an ex-colleague him and his friends did the same thing. So they drove up there in the car. Mm. Car not red. I don't think it was red. Ah, so uh, you see? Okay. So this <laughs> this might actually prove your friend's theory correct. So they drove up there in the car. They did the same thing. They drove up there, did a three-point turn, didn't get out of the car, then just drove back down. But before they drove back down, they waited with their back of the car facing the gate of Old Johnny Hospital. And they were like, oh, okay, let's just see how long we can stay down here. The driver, I assume is the guy who can see. Um after a certain point, he went, okay, we gotta go. Oh. Nice. And then he just drove down and he didn't tell them why. Eventually he found out, uh, the, the rest of them found out. He told them that he looked in his rear view mirror. No. And he saw from behind the car, a hand just come out. No. And then laid on the trunk. Oh my God, I have goosebumps. Yeah. So he was Ding. like, okay, yeah. time to go. Uh, so he got the sight. La. He, the, I, I assume he has the sight. Uh, and then he still drive. No, no I stupid, s- yeah. I swear it's people who can see, right? Who like to stir shit, man. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. really, la. Well, it, some of them. To be yeah, fair. not really, la. I feel like it's really half-half, la. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, it's like normal people also, la. Sometimes you, people who, who knows better, they, they won't yeah. do it, la, yeah. right? Unless there's a reason for it, la. But, bro. <laughs> but at, anyway, day or night, they are there. So you, mm. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you go day or night. Just night, more activity only. I, I like how you make it sound like a supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Go, ghosts always open for you 24-7. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's always 24-7. Someone seven. told me that the gate below, you know the long staircase on the other side, the ah. one that mm-hmm. faces, yeah, that apparently now there's a box there that just plays Buddhist chanting. Somebody put a radio there to just oh. play Buddhist chanting at the gate. Yeah. yeah. I think there is, there is a whole, I mean, we've talked about Old Changi Hospital on this podcast for like a lot of episodes already. Mm-hmm. But there is this whole, you know, there's progression, man. There's this whole idea of that they want to basically turn it into astrology. Mm, place. Mm. <laughs> I think they are in the in in the process of trying to cleanse it or trying to negotiate. Mm. I, I'm a bit more pessimistic. I don't think you can. Uh. I, I honestly feel that it's very, very hard. Uh, Rain Tree Hotel was there and, mm. you know, and uh, uh, one of our previous uh, guests, uh, Eugene Tay from Supernatural Confession also said that, you know, there was certain deal made. There was certain things said and it wasn't matched. And then that's why the, yeah, that's why the business went bust all this. One part of the reason lah, we, we, we are assuming, right? So I think it's very, very hard uh, to, to get rid of them. Uh, and honestly, even if you open an astrology place, people won't go there for the astrology. Mm. I think people will go there. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm, I'm in Old Changi Hospital <laughs> legally now. I'm in Old Changi Hospital illegally. Yeah, so... We'll see lah, I guess we'll see. I do like how this episode eventually turned into real estate and on things. Oh my gosh. No, <laughs> but do you think it would work if you raised it to the ground? Like you re- you just made it for development. Made it a development lot. You you ignore the history of it. You're just like, screw the history, screw this. This is a waste of a good property. Let's mm. make it into like a condo or something. So completely tear down the building. You just tear it down. You, you even tear down the foundations. You relay new foundations. 
it is in fact a his, historical site. Mm, mm. It is. It so is. I don't think the powers at play would want to do that. They want to conserve it. And I think it should be conserved. But uh, tearing it down also presents another challenge because uh, there's certain saying in feng shui when you tear down a haunted location, you release whatever's inside mm. onto the world. Oh, is that so? So I, I, there's no... There's no evidence of this, but mm-hmm. there's a trend. The red house is not t- torn down. Yeah. It's a school now. Oh. It's like a preschool or kindergarten. Yeah. The Matilda house, mm-hmm. which is at Bongo, is mm-hmm. integrated into a development. Yeah. Mm. People say that, oh no, la, it's a it's a country club. La, but <laughs> have you seen the photo of seven months? They pray around the wow. Matilda house. Uh yeah, like yeah. Golden Mao, <laughs> Golden Mao complex. Oh my god! You yeah, know you can so see many. it from um, where we're staying now. You can see Golden Mao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love Golden Mao. Like. Golden Mao is do. awesome. Do you, do you see any activity going on in Golden Mao? You Mall, know, sometimes right? like me and Ruben will just like stand there for a while, and then I'll just like stare at it. I'll be like, because you know now it's all dark. Yeah. Yeah. So I just keep looking. Sometimes okay, 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 okay. So Ruben says that it's just people who are in the process of moving out, mm-hmm. and sometimes you can see like a bit of light. Mm. from like certain units. And mm. he's like, no, la, it's just squatters. It's just people who are supposed to move out but still haven't. No, uh, it's fully fenced up already. So it it, it could be- <gasps> You were right. It, it, oh. By the way, Ruben is- My partner. Yes. yes. Yeah. You need to set context. Like, <laughs> who the hell is Ruben? <laughs> but, uh, so, so, so for Golden Mile, right? Uh, for my understanding is that they are in the midst of Clearing the inside. Yeah. So yeah. there could be workers. Okay, okay. It could okay. be workers. It may not necessarily be ghosts. Uh, but I, I feel bad for the workers that are working there late. Mm. It's pretty scary. But they have no context as well, especially if they just came to Singapore. What? I ass- yeah, I That's assume true. that most of them are foreign workers. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. so they don't really know. No, and then, okay, then this is where the foreign ghost, foreign person theory applies. Because if they are mm. like from like India or Bangladesh or like China, mm. they're just like, ah, these Singaporean ghosts, what are they going to do? But bro, the Raise ghost, my taxes? <laughs> bro, but the ghost die, bro. <laughs> oh, Golden Mile ghosts are die? Most of it. And there's a lot of Kumandong there. Is it, is it like brought in so like people go and yeah. raise them? Oh. Yeah, okay, lot, but no Thai lo- workers for it. No, but it's not that. Uh, but I think it's I don't know, like, I don't want to assume, but like I think mm. it's a pretty known thing within the Asian uh. c- culture and community that Thai ghosts are one of the most fierce ones. I well, to be fair, again, it's also I don't think it's the context of the ghost itself. I think it's the context of the building also. So if a foreign worker comes in mm. with zero context of the history of the building, mm. then they're not looking for the ghost itself. So. Mm. Mm. But like, but like, if you see it, like there oh, yeah. will be there will be offerings. There will be like I think altars. Some of them left the altars. So oh. I, I I shot a documentary about Golden Mao. So actually, one of the building people they said, "Hey, you want to see a life size Kumandong?" <gasps> Then I was like, okay. Then they brought me. It's damn creepy. The moment I saw it, my hair stand. So there's this back back alley at the level two of Golden Mile, right? Where mm-hmm. there is a there is a uh, basically a cargo lift. Wait, is it the one behind where you can get your mail order, right? What? <laughs> no, because there's all these little shops in Golden Mile last time. Where no, you no, can... no, no, no. It's not. It's not. So so it's like basically a cargo lift. Uh, yeah. Then it has direct access to level one where you know the level one, there's a car park inside yeah. the bus car park. There, yeah. There's an access. It's right beside the rubbish dump. So level two, right? Mm. Just before you go into the cargo lift, which is super creepy. That means the cargo yeah. lift open, right? You see it already. Okay, okay. It's okay. right in front of you. So there's this whole altar, a life-size kumantong. Life-size. I'm talking about like very big life-size. And then there's like a whole bunch of them. There are a lot of candles. It looks oh. like a freaking like altar that's straight out of the movies. I thought I thought Kumantongs were quite small. I thought, yeah, yeah, so but there were a lot. Then there was oh. one big one. Oh then shit! I was like, geez. The moment I see my hair stand, then I, I remember I had an intern with me. The intern is like almost one one point nine meters tall. He saw he also like, hey, car, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> did, it, did y'all film anything there? No, oh, I took shit. a quick photo, but it was blurry. I I, I just like I don't care. I just let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. go. It was super creepy. Like, uh, whose I mean, was it? Who's and then I asked like, I said, yeah. who was it? Then it's like, oh no, I don't know. Maybe the, some of the workers, they pray to it. But like, bro, at night, really, when you're doing deliveries, you come up, the first thing you see is that, and then you turn down wow. this long walkway, then before you come back into the supermarket. Bro, that's creepy, man. Bro, no, yeah. no. Yeah. So I, I'm just saying like, they will see these kind of things. There, there yeah. will be leftovers. Mm. What? 
And upstairs also will have that kind of mm. altars and stuff. I'm pretty sure as a normal person, you'll be like, oh, okay, this is something, this is a religious object. So what do I do? Exactly. So what do you do? It, it's like, it's like, do you just throw it away into the bulk disposal? Do you just... I, I Okay, mm. as someone who is Asian, if I'm tasked to do that in a Western country, I also won't throw. I'll be like, you get someone with power to go and do it. I'm not yeah. going to do that for you. That is like, bro. Yeah. But wait, so it's still there. I'm not sure, but I'm, I believe there is a lot of things that are still there. So when I went back, there was one time I kind of went in, uh, already abandoned, but they haven't sealed, they haven't sealed mm. up. So I saw there were quite a few deity statues mm. at the uh, bin center. So there were a lot. I left. thought you cut. I, if, if you <clears> are praying to the thing, I thought you have to move it with you when you move. People be irresponsible, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So or or I don't know, like people just leave like, mm. like or some maybe some of them went back to Thailand. I I'm I'm really not sure. Okay. Mm. But uh there is uh there is this place in Singapore that they had like a lot of abandoned deities. Uh. It's right uh at Tampanese Quarry. It's right, oh, be right, right beside right. Bedok Reservoir. There inside the forest there's this whole bunch of Is that why Bedok Reservoir is so No lah. Oh. That one is different reason, right? Okay, okay. But the Tampanese quarry is basically uh, used to be a quarry. It's just right beside Bedok Reservoir. It's also a big lake. Yeah. So that there, there's a lot of uh, abandoned deities. Mm. Like there. But nobody the wanna touch, nobody wanna. Yeah, they clear. just dump it. So I mean I recently went to Hong Kong, right? So there's a similar place in Hong Kong. It's oh. super then there was this Ang Mo photographer who did a yeah. photo series on it. <laughs> super creepy, yeah. So it's like this uh, this cliff, right? Yeah. Uh, I think outskirts of Hong Kong, yeah. where there's a lot of deities. So like you got Kwan Ima, you got like the Fudu, so everything. Yeah. So then he just went to photograph them. Like every single one. Then he did a photo series. That's wild. <laughs> huh. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so I don't know, would that a- would that area be more protected or less no, protected? Less. Why? But all the all yeah. the Yeah, exactly. Be- the logic stands. Because the the if you're a f- you if you're a follower of the religion, when you pray to the deity, then there will be the presence of the deity. Because mm, mm, right. that's just a vessel. Then if you don't pray, they will leave. They'll be like, okay, you don't nobody worship me, I leave. I go back. Mm. Then if it's a vessel, then things will go in. Oh. Pe- you will disguise itself as a deity. There, there are things like that. They will disguise themselves as a deity and then you pray to it and they will take the offerings. Uh, uh, then eventually you become evil. Uh, so that, yeah, that they can become a gathering spot for that kind of Evil right. spirits yeah. lah. So uh per per center, do you remember right? Per center. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Per center also had I went to the car park, they had like one yeah. whole row of all the DT. I even saw one, right? The Quanima head was half. It's just the no, head. Then they just put it there. No, you can't do that. That's yeah, you so, can't do that. Somebody yeah. did it and then they just hang it on the, the staircase. It's really weird. Okay, okay. So then then it begs the question. You know, like white people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard of them. Yep, yep. Um they always have like the Buddha hit. Yeah. So then it's an empty vessel in their house, no? That is a good point. Only if they, they don't pray to it. They just only if they kai kuang. So there is this ritual called opening of the eyes. Right. So when you buy a, a deity statue mm. with the with the intention of praying, you actually need to open his eyes. So there's a whole ritual of like summoning the deity down right. and opening his eyes. Then you actually paint the eyes red. So you, you basically oh. you're, you're blessing the de- the deity statue to you know to come alive lah. So if if you don't, then yeah lah, it's it's just a it's just okay. a thing. But that you run the risk of things entering it. That's why Chinese people are a bit more afraid of dolls mm. because dolls are also empty vessels. So if people who are like a bit more superstitious, they will usually put like a red cloth behind the doll if they're collecting, so that the doll will not be possessed by mm. spirits. I'm, I'm going to ask this question and it's going to sound like it's a joke, <laughs> but it's an actual serious question. Okay. If that's the theory behind dolls. Oh my God, I know where you're going. Yeah. What about other toys that look like dolls, like action figures? Action figures is fine. Like dolls like Grogu, you see? Like Grogu. Yeah, then that that is acceptable to it. Like, if you believe in it. Like. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, I heard this from on, on another podcast. They did say that... Uh, there's one way to mitigate it without using the red paper. So it's basically you keep talking to your doll like a, like a like as if it was it was a toy. You cannot talk to it like a human being. You can't baby your doll. You can't say like, oh, daddy loves you a lot. Then you can't do that. Then you give it energy. Then if a spirit is in that, you will take that form. Okay. If you just treat it like 
this dog, uh, this this toy is super fun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to me, honestly, I don't believe, but I I just feel like okay, there's a lot of intricacies to this, because because I've held your Grogu like a baby before. Oh no, but I don't believe. So I'm I'm okay. okay. I'm yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay because this is not an object of you know religion. I mean, I mean, unless you would believe in Jediism. Yeah, unless you're a Jedi <laughs> la, Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, but like, so I have lucky cats in my house, you know? The, ah. Then I'll pet the lucky cat. Does that mean that there'll be a cat ghost in my lucky no cat? No lah, no lah. I don't think so. Oh. And and to be honest, it's a lucky cat. So that's that's a different thing. So oh. we're talking about like dolls that, that kind of look like humans. Uh. Like, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So he, I thought you were going in another direction. <laughs> what direction do you think I was going? So you know those life-size sex dolls? Nice. I like the direction you're going in. <laughs> Let's keep going there. Okay, so they're like silicone. They're made to look like humans. They they they, they have eyes that look human. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like the most hauntiest haunting thing that you would? And then the thing is that the, the, the people who buy them, they treat them like humans. They, mm. they treat them like their girlfriend. They, yeah. they dress them up. They like, at least from what I've seen, they don't use them as like a thing, an object. They use them as like a, a parahuman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They can get married to you. In Japan, there was one guy who got married to the doll. Exactly. Why wouldn't... Then then as a ghost, you are looking for something that is as human-like to inhabit. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the prime vessel? Yeah. Because say right now, directly to the camera, <laughs> a briefcase and hantu... We chop this idea first, okay? Okay. So we're gonna make we'll we will eventually make this film. I don't know how it's gonna be rated, but we're eventually gonna make this film. We chop the idea first. What what film? Uh, a sex doll that gets uh, haunted. Yeah, a sex doll gets uh, that's get. I haven't figured out a title yet. I no, have to come up with a solid so title for this. But it's so scary because you can post them right, and then so some people in imagine you come into your house, your friend, not Carl, not Win. Let's give him a name. Um, Georgie. You went to Georgie's house, and then he he sit, uh, in the corner sitting. It's just a doll, and it just stares at you all day, all night. First of all. If you go to Georgie's house and he leaves his sex doll out in the open, <laughs> maybe don't be friends with Georgie anymore. Yeah. I, I feel like there, there might be something going on out there. Yeah. Or even but, like Georgina and then she has like a, a man sex doll with her. No, that's fair. But that is a good point. With a sex... And, and that actually is a very good question. Yeah. That I, yes. In so short, that, yes. Okay. Ah. Yes. Because uh, one thing that we... I've heard lah. I've mm. heard. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a master, but I've heard. Um that they, the spirits, they do like to eat human bodily fluids, if you get what I mean. Oh. Ah. Oh. Everything from vomit to whatever you can imagine. Oh. So, yeah, I think I think it would be very enticing. And I think that that would add into the idea of our future movie. <laughs> well, but, clearly at least an M18. Yeah, but I mean, um, we don't king shame, right? You like whatever you like. Uh. No, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you cannot haunt her, then you're tai chi. Uh. I mean, I, I, are we technically king shaming the ghost at this point? No, king shaming the guy. La. I yeah, have yeah. a plot. <laughs> See, she has a plot. <laughs> we, we talk off air. We talk, yeah. Yeah, we talk off air. <laughs> Already the idea is on, on film now. So we talk off air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I Again, I like how we're scrolling through the questions, but at the same time, we've gone come. No, but but that's the beauty about yeah, Dead yeah. Air. Dead yeah. Air is not scripted. Yeah. That, technically, like, we don't have a script. Oh. We just talk about ghosts all day long, all oh, night yeah. long, you know? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. right? Even the ghost is like, y'all are but talk talkative <laughs> bunch, uh, y'all. This this literally, uh, yeah. all of this, right, well, from that first question. Oh my we, god. The, we first touched, question. the first question. <laughs> yeah, the first question. This is the tangent we went on. Nice. Yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Okay, uh, go, go, go. Wait so here. how shall we circle back to, to yeah, what we're back. actually talking about? Yes. Um, this, actually, this question is more for, for you. Yeah. But have there, a, do you know of any incidents before where apparitions or spirits have actually been inappropriate with women? Mm. I mean, the, there's the very famous spirit of Southeast Asia, la, Aura Minya. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. Okay. That, that, one is, that one is like, it's just disgusting la. Yeah. and it, 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 there's some cultural history you go and read out yeah. like there's, there's, mm. it may not necessarily be a spirit it, it, it may be something that our colonizers created you know yeah. Yeah. Mm. but yes uh, I have seen it uh, been uh, like portrayed in films yeah 
it's it's quite messed up. So yeah. there was this Hong Kong film that I watched, a uh, horror film, obviously. So there's this woman who basically is lonely. Mm. Then she's, she, she stumbles upon like this guy who died and he's like, wow, so handsome. Then you guess what happened? Uh? The no. guy, the ghost follow him back. And then she started, you know, she started having sex with the ghost. Uh. Yeah, but not by her own will. So she apparently was possessed by the spirit. And then uh, the friend noticed what was going on. He was like, dude, I, I need to save her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, then she he got like a, sort of like a guy who can see and then they negotiated with the ghost. Lah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, there's some comedy elements lah, too, you know, because this is this is quite heavy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, basically the guy was like, okay, uh, you leave her alone uh, because it's not right. Even as a spirit, it's not right. This this is this is like, you didn't ask for consent. You're just controlling her. Mm. Then the, the spirit basically told him like, okay, fine. Then you let me beat you up. Oh. Beat up the, the guy with the third eye. Then the guy cannot beat up. Uh. Then the, the spirit left uh, after that. Yeah. The guy is a bro. Yeah. He's like, okay. That, that's an ally right there. Yeah. He's like, okay, I guess. Then he cannot beat up. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a somewhat fair trade. Uh. Unless of course, yeah. like, you know, he had to go to the hospital after that because like yeah. internal yeah. injuries. I, I Honestly, like, if you're asking me like for actual cases, I, I don't know of any. Mm. Uh, yeah. But um, the fact that it has been portrayed in films Maybe there is some truth in that. Yeah. Because I, I, I've, like reading the case, I was thinking to myself like, oh wait, this, this sounds, first of all, horrible, but also at the same time, huh, how come yeah. I've never heard of anything? Yeah. Like exactly, before? right? You've been traveling, right? I have. How, have, how has your traveling been? <laughs> it has been great. I'm going to be skinny in two to eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's for yeah. for anybody without context. That's gonna be really interesting. It's like, oh, you travel and lose weight. Uh -huh. Have you been like doing marathons or traveling? <laughs> or I did. I did um, fat dissolving injections in Korea, and then while I was lying on the hospital bed, getting um, the fat in the fat dissolving injections injected, I looked at the nurse and I was like, "So y'all got." any scary stories here and then she looked at me and was like ma'am this is an aesthetics clinic <laughs> <laughs> to be fair what scary stories were you asking her for like were you asking about yeah. ghosts or I were mean, you asking about like horror like stories like, final destination like just stuff. generally because you know like hospitals and whatnot. And but, but she did make a very fair point this was an aesthetics clinic in Hongdae so so perhaps not uh, and they did a lot of non-invasive stuff which I think is like safer I guess less likelihood of dying from stuff yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, yeah. fair enough T Teddy Teddy actually lived up to her her end of the bargain she's like okay okay I'm travelling I'm gonna try to ask people yeah. <laughs> for ghost stories <laughs> then I always imagine like how would she ask it uh. I did not expect her to like in the middle of procedure so go ghost story or not yeah. uh? No, because, who else did you ask? Um, I, asked, I asked my lash tech who did uh, a lash perm and a lash tint and then she was like, ma'am, this is a lash studio. <laughs> what do you want to happen in a lash studio? I like to believe that everybody you ask had the exact same response. Ma'am, yeah. ma'am, th this is a burger place. <laughs> ma'am, we serve noodles. What were you hoping for here? <laughs> Noodle ghost. <laughs> so, so, okay, I mean, yeah. other than your Korea trip, were, yeah. were there any other trips that, you know, something creepy happened? So oh my God, did I tell you all this story on, on when we recorded? No. Okay, so I went, I went to Bali and on the last night we stayed in a Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And I'm very certain I told a lot of people this story, but maybe I told it on my own podcast. Ah, okay. Yeah, me and Re Re Ruben recounted it, but I will tell it to you now. Nice. Uh, we stayed in this Airbnb and the Airbnb was beautiful. It was supposed to be like a tech Airbnb and we needed to because we were staying with like, what? Uh, eight people mm. and two of the people needed like an uh, office to work and this this Airbnb right. was huge it had an actual office oh nice okay. and then it was next to a field it was next to two fields the field in front which was like a rice field and the field on the side so it was just on its own little corner so so houses next to its right but nothing else on the front and to the side mm. and the first thing that we noticed was something wrong was like we went to the door and we input the Airbnb code because it was a smart lock and nothing and then so we had to wait for the person and the second thing was that we went in and there was no wi-fi even though this was a smart house and the fact that there was no wi-fi was like a bit dodgy because like the rest mm. of Bali you know it's like hooked up yeah and so this is the first thing that happened to me and Ruben, because we were sleeping there, in the middle of the night, the, the, the curtains closed. Did you just speak? 
and then they closed. And then the lights turned on. Like, my bedside light, his bedside light. And then huh. I was like, then Ruben was sleeping. He slept through all this. I smacked him. I was like, <laughs> and, and then, and then, and then um, there were like frogs that I swear were croaking, but their croaking sounded like, save me, save me. Wow. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to imagine what that could sound yeah. like. Like, Wait, so, me. so it was still me. the deep serve me. No, but the, the intonation was like save me, save me. Yeah. So between the curtains, the frogs, and the lights, I was like, oh fuck. And then the so next morning we go down and then we discuss over breakfast. Because we were only staying there for one night, so why not talk about it, right? And before I could say it, uh the the, the girls in the room next to us was like, Did something weird happen to y'all last night? Ooh. Yeah. And apparently Ours only happened once, but hers happened three times. The Jeez. the light and the so they had these built-in lights yeah. in the in the closets. They turned on the closet lights turned on the lamp turned on and the curtains kept opening and closing. So ours was just like one close done, mm. but hers was like open close open close, and it happened like at two a.m. at four a.m. at five a.m. So okay, the curtains are remote control. Like, yeah, so. they're remote control. The lights uh, are they, like, remote control as well. Okay. And then so if and then we were like, is it a Wi-Fi issue? Because like you know you press yeah. a few times, but then if it was a Wi-Fi issue, why didn't it just happen once? Why did it happen like across the night? And then so the uh, the, the and then so we were eating breakfast, and then boom, that dude comes in, and he hears us talking about this, and he was like, my blinds rolled down themselves at night. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. I always find that very, like it's it's such a weird combination to me of ghosts and technology. Yeah, yeah. and the frogs. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Really, and the frogs. It doesn't really add, add up lah. Like, I mean, mm. you, when you combine them together, it is a bit like okay, it's a bit weird yeah. That's that's thing. Like okay, if it's if it's just a normal light, yeah. to me like that seems somehow easier because you can you can imagine ghosts mm. f- recent enough that they can yeah. control yeah. Yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or even yeah. television, but like the remote control, like blinds and everything. Yeah. And then the dude whose blinds went up and down. So so on that day, we like separated. Because you know, when you travel a big group, somebody wants to do this, somebody yeah, wants yeah. to do that. Mm. And so when he came back to the Airbnb, he was like the last one back in the Airbnb. Everybody else went for like massages and stuff. Mm. So he was walking around exploring because it's big, right? It's like yeah. a four-story terrace, blah, 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 everything. Mm-hmm. And so he said that when he was walking around by himself, by the way, he saw a shadow move behind mm. the stairwell and he thought it was Ruben because Ruben is like tall and mm. he likes to take pictures. And then so he's like, if Ruben, and then he walks over, nobody there. Yeah. But the place is like glass and concrete and open. So he looks up, nobody. But there was very clearly a person's shadow that moved away. Yeah. Ooh, damn. What time was this? At like four or five o'clock, like before sunset. Yeah. And then he also said that we went to this KFC next to the field. He said that KFC haunted. Why? <laughs> Don't know. <like. laughs> he said he saw like altar in the field next to the KFC. Because you know, like oh. Bali, they got they have all these random ass altars. And he's indoors. So he was like, oh, I saw the altar. I think this, this KFC is haunted. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, go, going going by the Golden Mile theory, technically, yes. Like. <laughs> KFC haunted. Uh. Wow. So, okay. There, there's a lot of lot of things to unpack. For, first of all, while you're trying to unpack all of that, <laughs> yeah. you really want to visit that KFC, don't you? Yes, <laughs> I knew it. Indo KFC is superior. Oh, okay. I, I thought like I thought like, I thought just Malaysia also. Oh. Which I, one better, Malaysia? Or I I have to ask this. Don't start a yeah. war, lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Indo more. Okay. Yes. What is it about Indo KFC that makes it superior? I don't think that it is. I think at, at both of them are superior to Singapore KFC. Oh yeah, that's for sure. La. Yeah. No, but I think usually when I'm in Indo, I'm, I'm there for like a more fun reason. I'm there for vacay. It's, mm. it's more exciting. Whereas when I travel to Malaysia, it's like to run errands. Mm. Hair, I, nails, blah, blah, blah. It's like a boring errand run thing. Yeah, but Indonesia is like, I'm on holiday. No, but I like, was talking about KFC though. Yeah, so yeah. then it's a feeling, you know. Oh, you're, you're already, in a, I'm already okay, okay, in a okay. better mood when I'm mm. in like Bali versus like I'm in JB to get a prescription refill. Okay, yeah. I I am fairly certain this is the only food conversation involving Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore where nobody is gonna bother to chime in. And be like, okay, lah, fair enough, lah. 
<laughs> it's KFC. Nobody's really going to uh, fight over this. No, and uh, you know KFC has uh, noodles, has pasta. Nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love fake pasta. It tastes so good. It's a fake pasta. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just put some tomato ketchup on the on the noodles. Yeah. Enough. Yes, yeah. like Jolly Bean. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, going back to the... <laughs> you've been unpacking this whole time, right? <laughs> going, going back to the, the analysis, right? I, yeah. I, I, for one, think that the, the blinds thing... Mm-hmm. That one is actually uh, probably a tech error because mm. if it's like two two a.m. four a.m. five a.m. all sharp uh, we're yeah. not talking about some weird timing like two no, three no, three. No, no, no. But it wasn't like all sharp. It was like two plus, three plus, four oh. plus that kind. But also you can explain it as like just basically tech failure la. Like yeah. somebody set the auto thing and then screw up. Maybe the yeah. time zone change or something. Uh, but all happening at. All three rooms, I think yes. there's a bit of a coincidence. Unless you're saying like the timing, all of them. No, were... the timing were all different. And it only, it only happened once for me and Ruben. It happened three times for the girls. And it only happened once for the guy down, the guys mm. downstairs. Yeah, I would say that the, the tag thing probably a bit like uh, weird. Lah. Mm. But I wouldn't say that it's straight up haunting. But the croaking. <laughs> the save help me. me. Help me, help save me. me. They want a bit, yeah. a bit. Um, messed up. Yeah. Uh, I would say maybe. Then I think the shadow one is straight up. Yeah. He saw what he saw. Mm. But I want to ask, like, did he make the KFC haunted statement before or after the shadow? Uh, after. 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 He said he said he saw it when he was walking up, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's inside the house. La. The shadow he saw is inside the house. La. Yeah. Yeah. It could be either the house spirit, the house guardian. Mm. Uh, or no, but we went, to eat, we went to eat KFC afterwards, after we left the Airbnb. Yeah. yeah. You know what's the scariest thing though? What? Bali traffic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that one, no need to say <laughs> lah. I die. Yeah. It took us like, like two hours to get from like Uluwatu to Jimbara. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That one, I don't, I don't think you can believe that it's supernatural lah. Yeah, I, that's, that's the one There's just too many yeah. people there lah. And the roads are small. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would, see, I was about to say, like, it's the... Maybe if it was just the the blinds and the curtains going off by mm-hmm. I would agree that yeah, it's probably a tech thing. I think when it's a bit too much of a coincidence when you combine it with yeah. the frogs and yeah. the shadow. Mm. Yeah. Even if it was one of those things, you can be like, well, you know, maybe you heard something. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah. I think the two things combined with all of that, that's what makes it slightly creepier for me. So I I don't know. Yeah, your your I mean. <laughs> Your friend Sway lah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other explanation, yes. But yeah. he's, he's Indo based in Singapore. He's Indo based in Singapore. Oh. And he's like, he's not like the most third eye super, he's a very like reasonable, rational person. He doesn't often have scary stories. Yeah. So did he, did he sleep that night or not? He did. <laughs> As in like, did he sleep after he saw the shadow? Oh yeah, yeah. He's just like, I, I think, it's Singaporean, Southeast Asians. We usually like, oh, you see something, don't say anything, go go to sleep. But then yeah. you go and tell y'all. In the, the next day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Plus we only saying that one night, one night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so the KFC thing, when he, when he made this, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to keep harping on the KFC thing. Yeah. When he made that statement, oh. so he didn't elaborate at all what he meant. He just said, I saw an altar and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is, <laughs> he didn't see anything at the KFC, right? No, 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 no. The KFC was great. <laughs> I went back for seconds. I ordered like one, two piece and then I'm like, ah, I could still eat. Then I went down and ordered because you know, the KFC, they're so reasonably priced. Yeah. Does, does, the yeah. K- does the KFC fall into the same category as the ratio in terms of haunt, se- severity of haunting versus quality of food? I would go to that KFC if it was a 24 hour KFC because you know, it was very big. Yeah. <laughs> food was very solid. Yeah. I think in terms of haunted places, there is this one um, McDonald's drive through in Singapore at um, in the West, mm. next to an industrial park. Mm-hmm. I know that one. You going. know the one, right? I know the one. Yeah, keep yeah. Keep going, keep going. Because um, one of my best, closest friends, uh, Michelle, whenever I go stay over, whenever we hang out, sometimes at night we'll be like, ah, bit itchy then we'll drive by and then while we're like waiting it always feels a bit bad vibes because it's like industrial zone but it is a 24 hour drive through I used to work near there oh did you so was it dodgy I mean I was there during the day okay and it wasn't the best job so if there was anything terrifying down there it was probably more my work than anything else Uh. so I didn't but 
Carl also points out that I am blissfully ignorant. Oh, he very things. ignorant. Right? Oh, you really? Could, you could have a ghost okay. thing, right? Then he'll yeah. be like ignorant, on, which I, is a blessing, lah. It, it is a blessing. I've yeah. like you know ever since we started, I've had people telling me, oh, you know, I, I've seen your videos and then got this and that. Oh, really? Ah, yeah. oh, I, I don't know. Uh. So yeah. Combined with the fact that I really hated my job, <laughs> chances are I probably wouldn't have experienced or seen anything. Wait, the the McDonald's at West Coast, ah? Uh, it no, is on the West. It's on the West. Yes. See lah. Where? Not, I'm not gonna see it. <laughs> oh, it, oh <laughs> Ark, ah. Ark, ah. Is it at Ark? It's near. It's near Bukit Batok. Mm. I couldn't tell you where it was exactly. Is it Ark? Like, is it Ark got the drive through ah? Because uh, I'm a passenger oh. princess, so usually oh. I use phone. Then <laughs> near Bukit Batok ah. Yeah. Oh, I need to ask. I need to ask someone. Yeah. Next time I'm, I go through, I take picture yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, please, yeah. please, 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 please. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, oh, surrounding it is all like industrial. Yeah, then you it's have just one industrial McDonald's. Just yeah, then you have one McDonald's just there. Nice. Yeah. I want goes, yeah. Yeah, then, then you can park and eat if you don't mind the vibes. I'm, I'm, okay, wait. Let me let me see whether I'm gonna eat extra there fast. Are, there are residential estates nearby, right? It's yeah, there directly. are residential estates yeah, yeah. nearby. Um because interestingly enough, Michelle, who is on my podcast often, but not so often now because she's a big girl with a big girl job now. Yes. Uh, yeah. So now she's- Congratulations, a Real profesh. No time yes. for this. Um, she lives near one of um, the haunted places in Bukit Batok. Like, so, so her house is in the Hillview area and it's mm. in walking distance of- uh, allegedly very haunted place where like the mistress threw herself off the, the balcony. Mansion, ah, the yeah, yeah, and they've oh. raised it. It's in walking distance. It's still there or the man- As in like the, the that, plot of land the is still there. The plot of land is still the there. The gate is, everything's still there. We yeah, walked yeah. past it last time. Ah. Oh, we used to walk, me and Michelle, we used, yeah. we, we, we'll get ice cream. We look at the it. gates yeah. like, wow, very big, ah, the house. Yeah, the lot very big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, the land is still there. I, they raised the, the building. They raised the whole thing down and apparently she said when they um raised it down, you could hear like, ooh, Oh, like woo la. Like, <laughs> like, like literally woo. La. As in like the ghost wooing. Yeah, yeah, the ghost woo. Doesn't sound scary <laughs> to <Hang on>. me. <laughs> Sorry, that, that actually does remind me. I wanted to circle back to something I forgot to ask. Uh, so if, let's say you do raise a haunted location, you said that the whatever's in there is set free. Yes. Mm. Does that mean that the plot of land technically could also no longer be haunted because the spirits have gone yeah. elsewhere? That is an extremely fair point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But then, of course, you don't know where they go. La. Yeah, la. you set free. Okay. You set them free. La. Because it could be binding. La. Yeah, but Pearl Hill, they technically raised it to the ground, right? Yeah. Mm. So that means the new the new condo not not hunted anymore, right? Uh, Not sure. Oh, because like, I mean, if I if I could afford it, I would totally have bought because it's so central. Yeah. So so yeah. recently, I've been sh- shooting a documentary. Then I, uh, I shot near Bukit Brown recently, like, like literally last weekend. Uh. Then... <clears throat> Bukit Brown is also very near to Caldercourt. Yeah. Mm. So there was an aerial shot that we used the drone to fly. And then we were shooting the aerial shot that time uh, we flew past Caldercourt Hill. It's oh. completely gone. Oh, mm. wow. So the old Media Court campus is completely gone. Caldercourt Hill is flattened. But it's very big. But the strange thing is that there was this one big tree don't scared ah. Oh my god, I looked into your um, reflection and I got thrown off. I was like, I almost had this moment. Nothing I was like, is there someone sitting next to y'all? No, no. So there was this uh, yeah. big tree that is uh, like situated in one of the old, uh, I think, props uh, department. Mm. So the tree is not cut. There were a few, quite quite a few trees left. Oh wow! So everything is raised. Yeah, and I don't know lah. Like I, I have, I had like a weird feeling when I was. Seeing the footage, I was like, wow. Yeah. Like this very big plot of land. Yeah, very, very big. Then and the, the developers are gonna build like a whole bunch of uh bungalows or GCBs. Uh, oh wow. Yeah, there. So and then right next to it, just down a little bit is Bukit Brown Cemetery. Yeah, then you can see the graves and all. Like, woo. Yeah. I like how I know for a fact that the documentary you're filming has nothing to do with the supernatural. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's nothing it's to do with not the supernatural. supernatural. And then for some reason he just ends up near Bukit Brown Cemetery. Mm. Yeah, la. yeah, la. yeah. There's this um girl on TikTok, this uh white girl. Mm-hmm. She cleans graves at night. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That sounds sweet. 
It is. is. She's it? really nice. Huh. She's like, then she would narrate, then she would say like, oh, this person, that, that, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, then she, like I really like very clean. Were... Very clean, yeah, like mm. before and after, very, very clean. Yeah, and she says a lot of wholesome things. She's like, it's so sad that they died so young. So hopefully oh. we can we can reveal the name and find out more. I'm like, yeah. bro, I wouldn't even say anything like it, that. It, is she doing this in Singapore? Or? No, no, no. no, no. no. Some, okay. Yeah. And then sometimes, right, she will film in, like she'll put something leaning against, like she'll have like her broom leaning against the thing and then the thing will just move. Mm. Yeah. So I don't block my <laughs> and, and I bet she doesn't even notice, right? She does, she does. Then oh, okay. she'll like zoom zoom. Yeah. Yeah, but like I mean when you play with this kind of thing, but honestly, I I I don't think you should use but then again, it's also like it's a nice thing to do, but I mean, like it's, it's, it's also it's also it's also reflecting on us. Uh. You shouldn't use dead people as your content. I mean, <laughs> but technically we, we are kind of using dead people as our content. Or like, so yeah. there's a paradox there. Uh. There's like Well, to be fair, we're not using dead people per se because we don't know who the people are. Yeah. So we're using ghost stories and urban legend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's Fair it's enough. it's not like So are we keep lying to ourselves, huh? <laughs> no, but like okay. And some of them are like demons and stuff. I read your book, I read Work Life Balance. Oh thank you. Yeah, some of them are like not dead people. They are just like they exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, yes. they're there, la. they're there, they're there. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know. I, I, I feel like I mean we've we've all had this discussion before where it's always a fine line and it does boil down to the matter of respect. So if you're cleaning graves, <laughs> that there really is nothing more respectful than that. Yeah. Mm, like mm, you mm. getting content out of doing a good deed. Mm. Yeah, but I'm like, it's, it's my my thoughts on that is a bit iffy because you're, if you're doing charity, you wouldn't want to stuff a camera yeah. into the person's face. Mm. Right? It's like you're you're donating fifty dollars, then you're like oh, here's a film crew filming me giving you $50 <laughs> like, and I'm going to make a shit ton of money off it. Like, mm. I think there is this, it's debatable. It's always, la, yeah, it's it's debatable, always a fine. La, debatable. Of course, what she's doing is nice, but at the same time, there's like, no one to argue against it, you see. Yeah, mm. but like person I said, probably re reincarnate already or something. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know, if they reincarnated, then at least they can come back and argue. It's like, <laughs> hey, that's my grave. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like we've we've always had discussion before. Like where's the where's the line in terms of yeah. respect when it comes to stuff like this? And yeah. I I think it's a personal thing as well. Mm. At a certain point, like you know, after a while, there's there's no unanimous like, oh, this is disrespectful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. Hey, oh, do you want to play student? virtual reality games together? Like horror virtual reality? Did I tell you Hell that no. I wanted to be on date shot? Oh, wow. <laughs> you did tell us that. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. Let me get through mort mort what is it? Mortician's assistant. Mort yeah, mortician's assistant. Yeah. Let me get through that first before I decide whether I want to do virtual VR. Me and Ruben own two um, Oculi and we have Resident Evil 4 on one of them. We are very happy to play it with you because we bought it. Then we crossed the, you know, you have a refund period. Yeah. We bought it and then they purposely made the tutorial like damn long. The tutorial <laughs> took like two hours. Then we crossed the refund period and then it turns out that both of us, well, mainly me, I'm too scared to play. Resident Evil 4? Yes. Why? I, I like how he said no. And then the moment you mentioned Resident Evil 4, oh, actually, he, he looked it, like he was considering it. No, well. Resident like, Evil is like- oh, It might not, not be Resident Evil. It was um something something, Saints and Sinners. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But, but it was scary enough because at the you you have limited ammo and you have um a screwdriver and then you have to stab. Oh, Walking Dead. Oh Walk, yeah, it's Walking, walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyway, we have that available if you want yeah. to play. If it's zombies, I actually probably wouldn't mind as much. Zombie is easy lah. Yeah, yeah. Zombie, it's so zo scary. It, it, zombies is scary, yeah. but it's not like, zombies oh. are the kind of horror where it's not going to stick with me. Yeah. For, it's more like the shock and the gore. Yeah. If this mortician's assistant thing, it's, I'm weirdly bro, looking forward creepy, to it. Bro. It's creepy, bro. It's creepy. You, you work as a mortician's assistant, <laughs> yeah. but then you're alone. Then there's a haunting. Then you need to mm. cut up the bodies. You need to work lah. Yeah. So it's first person point of view. So then the light will go off. Then weird shit will happen. It's like, you know, uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe. Yes, it's kind of yes. like that. Oh. But you're playing it out. You know And then what, you need though? to survive. So I work in tech and tech has been kind of like volatile recently. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that if I got fired, if I got retrenched, I would take that time to retrain as mortician. Jesus. Be no, just because... It's 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 a it, you won't get fired. There's uh, always a, there's always business, and 
I low key think I would enjoy planning funerals. But mortician is different from planning funerals. Though. Then so I was like thinking of like going into that general the field. Death, the death. Yeah, one. the death field. Like maybe like a funeral director for millennials. Jeez. And then and then I would have like Spotify playlists of here are the songs that you can choose upon your death. And then I did it. I like be like a mortician, and I'll be like, here, here are the different looks that I can do. Do you want lashes? Do you want? We can lipo you before the open casket so that you look really skinny. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, so the, I I was thinking about that recently. Woman has thought it through. Yeah. Woman has thought it through. Respect. Yeah. What would your funeral playlist be called? Um. Your funeral playlist. Be oh called? me. Yeah. Ah. Uh, a long walk off a short pier, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty one. I, I feel like you're already predicting how you're gonna die here as uh, well. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, I I think I to your idea of like you know working in the industry of uh the you know mm. the date right. There was once that I was considering. Right? Everybody thinks about it. No, no, no. Not not as a mortician. <laughs> Definitely not everybody. <laughs> not not as a mortician, but 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 as a as someone who edits uh mortuaries. Mm. So it's something to do with media. La. I was considering somebody who edits mortuaries. So you edit the photograph of the deceased. Oh like obits. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what that's how it started also. So I think it's low-key kind of nice to do obituaries. Yes. Because mm. it's a list of everybody who loved you while you were yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at that. I, I've shot a funeral before uh, mm. as a photographer one time and I couldn't take it because it was too depressing already. Mm. So I did it once and I mean, there is money there, la, that's for mm. sure. But uh, the 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 obits thing, I was looking at it and then the job description, they say, you need to do a very good job. If you don't do a good job, they might come and find you. <laughs> You do not put this kind of thing in your JD. Yeah. Right? If you put yeah. this kind of thing, you scare people by like, okay, la, they, at least they have a sense of humor. Or do they? I want to do my own obit while I'm alive. I want to choose my own pictures. I yeah. want to choose who gets included. I'm just like, I don't like you second cousin once removed. You don't get included. I'm actually surprised that people don't do that. Exactly. Because you choose your picture, you choose your theme. Yeah. And so in every stage of your life, maybe every 10 years or so, you update your obit depending on like, whether you have children, yeah. whether you have a spouse. Imagine if you don't, right? Then like maybe you haven't gone through your divorce. Then your your first wife gets to be in the obit, but not your dearly loved girlfriend. Actually, mm. I take that back. I am not surprised that people don't do the obits because I, my comparison was, yeah. oh, well, people make wills, right? Yes, and then exactly. Not that many people do make wills. Oh, that is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I think I feel like we need to, we need to get... We need Teddy to back, right? stigmatize. And then we need to get like a funeral director here <laughs> huh. to talk to her about it. Yeah. Can, and can, then we can talk about the after death care yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. I can just imagine she's sitting out here as like, so as a funeral director, can I do this? And then funeral director is like, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, no. If you get a funeral director here and they give me a discount for it, I would totally plan out my funeral. Then sorted. We'll figure out how it's done. I'll, I want to even choose my outfit and it doesn't matter because if I'm dead and I can't fit in, just cut off pieces of me. Just Nice. They, they might give you a discount, but what if there's an expiry date? That's that <laughs> discount. Yeah. I don't know. You can, there's, I guess there's like a locking period. The lo <laughs> yeah. So you're like, uh, 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 it's 50% off though. Yeah. 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 But I, I do see that this is getting uh, this stigmatized already. La. There's mm. a lot of younger people joining the industry. Really? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah there's the starting pay high. Yeah. 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 It's That's not all about money. La. It's about like, you know, like just the, the you're helping people. La. Yeah. Generally, you're, you're actually helping families and stuff. Yeah. The mm. intention is good. I don't, it's yeah. a very stereotypical idea in my head, but I always assume that um, people come into the industry because their parents worked mm. in the industry before. Mm. But yeah. yeah, mostly it's like that. Mostly yeah. it's like that. Yeah, but but I think it, it, you're not normalizing it. No. Yeah. Death is just part of life. Right? Yeah, it's, that's it's, true. It's, it's pretty normal. But I, I didn't know that you <laughs> want to do it. And it's kind of like- I even have the website crime, planned out. True crime- <laughs> Then death industry. Okay, la. Yeah. I, I, I get it. La. Do, 
do, do you have a name for your company? I do, I do. I'll share it with you. Can, cannot okay, say okay, okay. Little yeah. people going open little a little rival. No, but I have, this, I have this idea. You go into the website and then so then you have two choices. Don't say. Little yeah. you say people steal your idea. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if, if any funeral directors are looking at this video. I am open for like partnerships. Yeah, I open <laughs> for partnership. And if you want to appear on Dead Air, sure, let us know. Yes. Then the name is very fitting, Dead Air, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So circ- circling back. Circling back. <laughs> to ghosts and creatures. <laughs> to ghosts and creatures. Like, like, like if you were a spirit that's watching this interview that's going on, like this talk show that's going on right now, you'd be like, hey, faster lah. I already die already. Don't talk about the die part. You talk about me. Can, can I just say, out of every episode of Dead Air that we've done, this is the one where I have no idea what we're going to name it. Yeah. Oh. Because we've covered so much. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a really good, good problem to health. It has some but- ideas. Will uh, possess sex dolls. Um, what was the other thing we talked about? The house? Oh, um, houses with histories. No, so, cannot. So, cannot. cannot. If, if, yeah. if we eventually use that for- Too yeah. 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 If we eventually use that for our HGTV show, then, you know. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But- I think TLC will also pick it up. That's true. That's true. Mm. I'm yeah. quite sure the sex dolls will fit in somewhere. Yes. <laughs> she said. Okay, back to the ghosts. Yes, back to the ghosts. <laughs> back to the ghosts. <laughs> so, so Vietnam has quite a few unique monsters. This is the one that you sent me. Yes. There's one called the Mavu. I don't know how to pronounce it. Mavu Daya. Okay, yeah. sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. A lady goes with long breasts that attacks victims at night <laughs> to forcibly breastfeed them until they fall <laughs> unconscious. In the 60s, prisoners in Saigon report seeing a woman with long breasts force feeding cellmates. So you sent him this link? Possibly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, assuming that you did and it wasn't just possibly, how did you find this? Okay, okay. Um. So around... Around Halloween, oh, okay, okay, I always do a haunted episode yeah. or, or multiple haunted episodes depending on mood. Uh, mainly it's a way to scare myself. And also, do you know I did the Ancestry and I found out that I was 3% Vietnamese? Oh, nice. ah. Wait, yeah. as in like the, the, which D- the DNA yeah, testing? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. spit into the thing and then you find oh, out okay. like what. And then I'm mostly like poor Chinese, but I have a little bit of bougie Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can tell by like the region. Interesting. And, um... So this this year after I like found out about my three percent ancestry, I was like, I'm gonna hit up all the things I know about Vietnam. I've got to respect my three percent ancestors. <laughs> and then so I found a lot of like haunted stories about Vietnam. Hmm. Yeah. Which to be fair, considering the history of that country, I imagine there's quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. Can yeah. I share the scariest one? Uh, not the scariest one, but the the one that is like most known. Anyway, I think there were a lot of hauntings that actually like got like pushed to the side or like hidden down or like clamped down on because like the communists don't really like myths and stuff like that. But apparently there is this museum in Ho Chi Minh, I think, Mm -hmm. that has this girl that haunts it. Is it like a war memorial museum? No, no, it's it's not. Yeah, so this, this museum used to be a house that uh, a bougie family used to stay in. And then so they had a daughter and I think the daughter did something that they didn't like. You know, like men last time, you're like, your daughter does something you don't like, you kill them, you wall them in, so the on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Discipline. Uh, yeah. Either that or the daughter had like um, skin lesions and they're like, oh, we can't let our daughter out in public. Anyway, she eventually died there, I think. Mm. And the guy was like, well, we have to pretend that she's never died because like people will say we're mistreating our daughter even though we are totally mistreating our daughter. Mm. And then so apparently after that, she started haunting the place. Um, there is also another rumor that after she died, they just they just left her body there like to, so that they could pretend. And it got to the point where like the parents would be like, okay, um, the maids and everything, please still continue bringing food to her room. And then they'll bring food to her room and then just take the uneaten food away. Yeah. So they kept up that like kind of facade very long oh jeez yeah and so even I think even the locals on forums they'll be like yeah at night you can see somebody like walking around the grounds crying and stuff because we all want the approval of our parents damn uh. <laughs> that is so Asian it I was is about to so say Asian. the real horror <laughs> yeah. negligent parents yeah so like this girl is so sad because her she just died because her parents didn't think that she was good enough. For some reason, that reminds me of a story I heard. Not Asian, 
um, I heard the story and I'm probably like getting it slightly wrong. So I was in I was in Norwich last year in the UK, mm. and I went on the ghost tour because <laughs> naturally I, I had to. Nice. You had to. I had to. It it like Kyle would have Kyle would have like shunned me if I hadn't gone on a ghost tour. <laughs> One of and it, it involved a little girl as well. So um, interestingly enough, it took place at this area called Tomb Alley. <laughs> nice. But Tomb is not grave tomb it's a uh, um t-o-m-e no 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 it's spelled tomb but I oh, think, like thumbs yeah so acid, I, acid I, reflux early oh no no it's 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 like um the nordic it's it's a nordic word or something like that yeah. oh. so apparently what happened was um during a plague um a little girl and her family were locked in a house jeez because they didn't want the plague spreading so they locked the people there locked the little girl and her family in the house the little girl managed to survive. I can't remember who, which one of the family members had the plague, mm. but the little girl managed to survive because she ate her family. No. So, fun, funnily enough, the place where where the little girl was supposedly, um, uh, where she eventually became a go- a cannibal ghost, um, right across the street, uh, right across from it is a church. Mm. So yeah, so she was locked in the house with her family. She apparently ate her family to survive, and then when she died, she haunted the place. Mm. The cannibal spirit haunted the place. Nice. Going around chewing on people. I don't know what she does, but quite frankly, I just don't want to see her <laughs> to find out. So they actually believe uh, in that thing. It's it's one of those legend things that they have down there. But like, the locals believe in it. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so mean, do, yeah. do they shun that place? Do they try to avoid that place? Do oh, they feel sorry or, for what they've like, done? they're like, oh, come, come. No, no, no. Like, there are officers in the building. Oh. oh. Yeah. So, like, yeah, people people work around there and yeah. everything. But yeah, like... Um, Imagine you OT, then you're here. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yum. You look mm, delicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you eating? Marbled yeah? meat. <laughs> your toll. <laughs> No, <laughs> but to be honest, if I was like in like a life and death situation and like, you know, my will to live is generally not high. Millennials, <laughs> our will to live is generally not that high. I just be like, oh, your will to live seems a bit higher than my will to live. How about you just eat me? <laughs> yeah. I like how it, to be fair, it's my fault, but now we're broaching into cannibal territory. <laughs> Would you want them to eat you while you were still alive? Or do you want them no, to no, wait for like, you to die? Like, kill me first, you know. Okay, but like, just enough. go ahead. I don't care. Yum. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> and did. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Especially yeah. if it was loved ones. Yeah, so like in an apocalypse situation. Oh, so recently I read this book called Tender is the Flesh. Um, where all other meat sources in the world become poison and then people tend to he- eating human meat. Great book written by a Spanish author, if I'm not wrong. I want to find this book. So it is excellent. Yes. Um, I thought it would be banned in Singapore, but no, apparently our our criteria for banning is... Um, <laughs> well. I mean, I mean, technically it's still your imagination. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So anyway, Tender is the Flash is being it's sold in like quite a few places. I've seen them in actual bookstores. Mm-hmm. And so initially I bought the ebook version and then when I saw it in Flash, I was like, whoa. When you saw it in the yeah. Flash. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly it slipped through. Yeah. And so in this book, uh, people raise humans as hits to be harvested. Mm. Ah. And is there like a social class kind of thing going on? No, no. It's just to it's just to show how easily we can like mm. turn into cannibals. Turn into cannibals, exactly. Mm. Honestly, I lost the thread because. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the yeah. the premise is enough for me to like try to push through. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. I just worry that I might get hungry halfway through reading it. Nice. <laughs> hey, do you watch um the initial um Hannibal the yeah. series? So beautiful, the cooking. I know, right? That, yeah. that was always an issue for me when I was watching. The dressing part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. And then sometimes he's making like, um, so I I quite like organ meat, like kway chap and stuff. <laughs> and so when he was making it, I was like, wow, that looks beautiful. <laughs> uh. I just realized I don't think I could be a cannibal. Why not? I have gout. Oh. Humans are not red meat, right? I mean- I thought humans have both red and white meat. Are we? You know way too much about this. This is <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. she's she's dangerous. I'm gonna assume first. She's like, I want to train as a mortician. Then I have a, I have a true kind podcast. I'm gonna read about cannibals. No, no. So I would I would not eat my friend. I would not. Uh, I think it's a bit weird for me. Uh, but I would let my friends eat me. 
Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. 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 It's very weird, yeah. No, but that, that, I mean, that's fair. You want your loved one to survive. Yeah, I want my loved ones to survive. But if your will to live not that strong, then you're not going to eat anybody. Lah. Yeah. Mm. I think my par- I think the generation before us, their will to live was very strong. Because like my grandma lived through like World War II. Mm. She lived through the Japanese. Um, my mom and my uncles, they're all like fighters. Mm. Whereas I'm just kind of like, oh, it's a bit hot. I guess I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, millennials. <laughs> yeah, so like if I was in a, like an apocalypse situation with my parents, I would be like, I think y'all have a very strong will to live and to survive. So go ahead, you have two other kids. <laughs> nice. That's, I, I like yeah. how you also went, you know, no, no, let my siblings live. I will die. I think their will to live also be higher than mine. Would, so wait, so you would even let your siblings eat your flesh? I genuinely think that my siblings have much more, you know, bigger for the world. Mm. Uh, me, any small inconvenience is too hot. It's too cold. My hair doesn't look good today. Um, somebody said something mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll die. <laughs> so five minutes into the apocalypse, you're like, take my flesh. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like um, I was in Korea with my friends and then suddenly there was a big mm. in the train. Because mm-hmm. like, I guess the train system's like with the weather, sometimes ah, like okay. that. And then we just looked at each other. And then and then me and my friends, I guess we'll die. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, wife is, my wife is like that on planes. Mm-hmm. So if the turbulence gets a little bit too rough, yeah. she just sits down there and she goes, well, I had a good run. Oh my God, same. The turbulence <laughs> is really bad on the way back. I was flying Asiana and it was bad enough that I had to lift my soup because they give us soup. Got, yeah, yeah. And they give us our drink. And then I was just like, I just carry on eating. <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, and I was just like, well, if I die, at least this was a decent last meal. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It was fun while it lasted, right? Yeah. Game it's, over. You know, you had a good run. You did your best. Uh, uh, anyway, this one's simulation only, la, right? Uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, and, here, and here I thought to myself, cannibals I, is as far uh, off the course uh, as we can go. You know? Just throw only. Just throw only. Just throw only. Look, let's be honest here. We've got, I think we've got like Doro, no, no, no. every single path. In we, need to, we need to recap for, for our listeners, right? Okay. The first, the first thing that we talked about was uh, housing, right? No, the ghost, the ghost molesting. Okay, correct. Yes. Ghost molesting. We we housing. tried. We tried to find some kind of unifying theme. Yes. Yeah. Right at the start. Yeah. Yes. And that's when it all went off the rails. <laughs> yes. It's okay. It's fun. Uh, property. Then after that, we went to Golden Mao. Mm. Uh, Old Changni Hospital. In mm. between, we had the sex dolls. Yeah, the sex doll. Let's not forget yes. about all oh, the dolls. Dolls. Yeah. So so is uh uh molesting ghosts, property, okay. uh Golden Mao Gold doll. Mile. Uh, Old Changi Hospital. Then what? Uh? Um, I think uh, from cannibalism. Can, no, well, no, before that. Um, before cannibalism. The girl spirit. You know, yeah. that In was Vietnam, Vietnam. Vietnam. So yeah. we circled back to traveling. Yeah, mm. traveling goes. Yeah. Then, uh, and then, then cannibalism. Mm. And now this is all a simulation. <laughs> no. And this is all a simulation. I'm just kidding. I yeah. I wish that was actually how we ended this episode. <laughs> Because that would have been perfect. That, this but this is all a simulation. This is all a simulation. So, all you know, a simulation. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> no, but like for real, like, jiang zhen de, we want to uh, ask you. <laughs> okay, okay. No, it's like, it's like my way of saying like for real, guys, for real. So, okay, okay, for real, for, for real, real. For real, serious, serious. <laughs> okay, so so we, we got this question that you know we will ask all our guests, mm. even reoccurring as. Yes. What scares you the most? Has your answer, has your answer changed from oh, the last time last you were? What was my last answer? Was my last answer the dark? I'm still hella scared I, of the dark. Honestly, I don't yeah. remember. I can't remember either. I thought it was, i quite yeah. sure it was people in general, but I could be wrong. Okay. So I, think, I, think I think it was My people. last answer may, may or may not be the dark because in general, I'm just like, I have an irrational fear of the dark. It stems from nothing. I just don't like it. Like if I didn't sleep with um, Ruben, like let's say he goes on a business trip or whatever, I usually have the light on. Like I'll have a lamp on. Mm. and now I just have the eye mask and then the thing is that I still need it to be dark I just need to know that I can just rip off my eye mask and it's light there's, there's light lah yeah okay uh. yeah but no so recently I've had this um, big fear so when I was in Bali I went surfing in Uluwatu and Uluwatu were the biggest waves I've ever surfed and then so there was a moment where I got caught in like the washing machine the whitewash right. and I thought I was gonna die because like um, my my leash got hooked on my legs I, cu- I couldn't reach the floor to bounce up and then I really was just like Good run. <laughs> Again, I was like, good run. And then I floated to the top. Wow. It was, um, I really like washed down. I drank water and I really was like, 
Ooh, good run. And then on the beach, Ruben was just drinking. <laughs> and, then, and then so I got up and then I went down again. And then I was just like, why did I even try? <laughs> <laughs> You got up. No, so I floated to the top. Yeah, I, and I, then I got dragged down again. And then I got dragged down oh, again. Oh, you got dragged down? I thought yeah. you like went back down because again. Because the waves were huge and I was just like, could run. Mm. And then I ended up like quite near the rocks and then I got up again and I was like, oh, I guess I'm not dead. And I pedaled to shore. I was like, done, we're done for the day. And um, I got really scared that I would get injured and not die. Ah. I would rather die. So recently, my my new big fear is I get injured, but I don't die. Like how injured? What are we talking about? Like, like what if I became paralyzed? Mm. What if I um, lost a limb? You know, the will to live is not there. And mm. then now I can't even kill myself. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> not with that attitude. Not with wow. that attitude. <laughs> yeah, so... I see. I thought yeah. you were gonna say you were scared you're gonna get injured in the water, yeah, and not yeah, die. Yeah, but then you will die by drowning. Yeah, no, 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 no. I rather just die by drowning. I don't want them to drag my body up, go through like ten thousand surgeries to keep me alive, and then I live with like mediocre quality of life. Mm. Yeah. And you are then, a true blue millennial. Yeah, and I know for a fact <laughs> that my parents would work very hard to keep me alive. And then the whole time I'd be like, no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so so the question is, is it stronger to embrace death what than, do you mean? than to embrace life? Which is stronger? My my will? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm, it's a genuine question. Like, you face death readily. It's like, die lah, die lah. I don't want people to suffer because of me. Die, die. Yeah. Or like, I will live on because people suffer for me. I will live on stronger. It's a genuine, it is philosophical, mm. right? Mm. But mm. it's a genuine question, right? I mean, I don't have an answer. I think both are noble. <laughs> Do you have an answer? I think it's a very personal thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, but I'm a die. <laughs> I, Sorry guys, this is so depressing. <laughs> Wait, okay, okay. Let me, let me uplift it a little bit more. Okay, you will live. No, 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 no. I, I, you will die? <laughs> also, no. My answer depends on where I am at the state of my life. Mm. So, he <laughs> coma. Half, half. That, that one really half, half. Yeah. No, so for me, it's I, interestingly enough, and I cannot for the life of me remember why, I had this conversation with my wife the other day. And I said that if, like, okay, so right now, I swear I'm not doing this to promote myself, but right now I'm working on like my first novel. I thought, I thought um, work-life balance was... It's a comic. It's a it's a well, book. It's, it's, it's a book comic. Book, it's book, a book comic. Co- book comic. This one is just pure words. Real novel. Yes. So, That's wow. So I I I I do not I do not rely on uh my friends, my other friends' amazing talents to make mm. me look better. Mm. So I told my wife that if I die now, yeah, with me approximately twenty thousand words into the novel, I'll it's be so annoyed. It's a full novella. Oh no, full novel. No, but 20k words is already oh, yeah, yeah. You're like in novella territory. Yeah, but I'd be annoyed because I hadn't finished it. Yeah. Mm. So I, yeah, that's the, I, I wouldn't, I would, I would struggle to live. Mm-hmm. I would, you know, the, the, the will to live is much stronger now. Immediately after the book's released, <laughs> if I get hit by a bus, I'll go, well, I had a good run. <laughs> However, yes. five weeks after the book is released, if I start work on my second book, then the will to live becomes strong again. So it's all it's, about your books, lah. What? It's all about my books, but okay. Let, what about your wife? <laughs> let's say okay. Let's say let's say when we were pre- when we were preparing for the wedding. Yeah. Will to live would have been very strong. Yeah. I was like, no, we, we we've made it this far. Yeah. Planning for wedding very tough. Yeah. So I would want also if I had died before we could get married. I'm quite sure my wife would have resurrected me just so just so she could kill me herself. <laughs> Like, How's your life insurance? Not enough that she's going to kill me. Um, she, all she inherits is my comics. So, you know, it's not the best deal if she wanted to kill me. Um, so yeah, so if if there is, if I'm in the midst of some big life event, the mm. will to live is stronger. Mm. Immediately after the life event, meow. Mm. so if you ever wanted to like kill me without me putting out a fight, just wait for me to have accomplished something mm. and kill me. Wow. Which I feel like is inviting people to go like, oh, uh, Tales from Incredible Tales, season one, ending soon already, right? No, but you guys, do you, do you guys have season two? Not sure. I mean, 
Not true. I mean, when this comes out, well, we'll know. Well, to keep yeah. Wayne alive. <laughs> when this comes out, Media Corp, it's up to you. No, no. When, when this comes out, we will already know. Yeah. yeah. By the time this comes out, we will already know. Yeah. To keep Wayne alive, you need season two. No, but yeah. then you could argue like, like by create, by being the co-host of Dead Air and being the co-creator of Ghost Maps, you're accomplishing something. I know I've accomplished what I've, I've already accomplished something, but then not enough. Ah. No, no, no. It's, Greedy, it's, yeah, this guy. it's not, it's not saying not enough. It's who, okay. As creators yourselves, you never see yourself reaching an end point, right? You're always yeah. creating something. Even if you continue to create, like say uh, a briefcase, mm. some part of you is like, Oh, I want, I want to, I want to do this. I want to, you know, start my own funeral home. So mm-hmm. there's other there's other things that you want to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's you accomplish something. So yes, if if after we we hit a hundred episodes of Ghost Maps, if somebody wanted to kill me, my my will to live not as strong. Mm. So mm-hmm. that that would have been one of those. But moments. we're working towards two hundred. Right? Now we're working. <laughs> no, no. But now we're working towards two hundred. I I it almost feels like once we get past uh, episode one hundred and ten. Mm then will to live stronger. Okay. Because ah. now still, it's still in the celebration of episode 100. Mode. <laughs> you guys are a depressing bunch. <laughs> I thought it was the like, uplifting answer. No, <laughs> it's not. Okay, I'm going to end it on, on, on a, uh, okay. So Okay, so your okay. fear, your fear is darkness, right? Okay, your fear is darkness. <laughs> and not dying. And and not dying yeah. when you're like seriously hurt. Okay. Yeah. So for me, right, my willpower is strong. My willpower is like Batman level. <laughs> I will persevere no matter what because I've seen some shit in my life. I've eaten some shit in my life. Mm. So I've, I've, I had like a pretty rough upbringing. So, mm. so all this right to me uh, is nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I'm the guiding light towards the darkness. Good ending, right? Good Very ending. Good. Good ending. Very good. Good ending. Respect. <laughs> Yes. That, that should be our cold opening as well. <laughs> just to tease people about what's coming. Uh, no, I like, am the guiding yeah. light into the people darkness. Think, later people start thinking, this, this, is, this is a wrong podcast. This is not horror. <laughs> <laughs> did did yeah. Kyle and Wayne just turn into a spiritual podcast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cow, yeah. cow. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Tell us when and where to catch a briefcase. Plug, plug. You can catch a briefcase podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere else. You can <laughs> don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the fact that the presenter voice suddenly switched uh, on. Okay. And you can catch it like every Tuesday, except on Tuesdays where my day job has consumed my life, which I guess this week there won't be an episode. But there were episodes for the last two weeks because I pre-scheduled it before I went on vacation. But then I came back and there was a lot of work in my inbox. <laughs> yes. And then I will pre-schedule. So like in the month, of May, I'm actually going to be out of the country for the whole month. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will try to get I, I will try to get true crime stories of the country of which I'm going to. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to have the month of May as cult month. Nice. Yeah, so every week I will have a story about a cult and I've already started researching cults. So I'm very nice. excited Ooh. for that. Nice. So a briefcase podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. Nice. Thanks, Daddy. One, two, three. And, and remember, remember just, just because they're stories, it doesn't, doesn't mean they're, they're not true. true. Thank you, Daddy. Goodbye. Thanks, Daddy. Ooh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Wave to the camera. Wave to the camera. <laughs> Ghostly head! <laughs> if you want to stay up to date on Huntu or listen to our other podcasts like Ghost Maps, subscribe now and follow us on social media. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon. Look for We Are Huntu or click the links in the description. Dead Air is a Hantu production hosted by Kai Ong and Win Ray with album art by Julin Lim and recorded on Audio Technical Mics. <laughs>